I was sent this Gochi Fix oscilloscope meter for review, and I've already used it to diagnose and repair this benchtop power supply, so good experience with that. And this video is just reviewing the scope meter itself. This is an unregulated benchtop power supply, just a bridge rectifier followed by a capacitor. And I was earlier trying to measure the ripple voltage using the AC mode on that meter. So I've got this big resistor hooked up that'll draw about half an amp here. And if I turn that on, this is graphing the AC component of the voltage, 0.1 volt per division. And I also want an AC voltage reading. So let's turn that off and back on again to get out of the scope mode. And select AC. So 2.63 volts roughly on the AC. And that reading I got the other day was completely wrong, but I haven't been able to reproduce that since. But what I have established is that measuring AC with a DC offset on this thing generally doesn't work. Usually it doesn't pick up anything. So it says 0 millivolts AC, but there is in fact an AC component on here. So measuring that with my old HP meter, that tells me 82 millivolts AC, which is correct. But now filtering out the DC component with a 470 microfarad capacitor and a 5K resistor, if I read the voltage here now, that correctly reads the AC component. And I've just been measuring the funny AC measurements on this thing some more, so I've got something set up. Bridge rectifier with a resistor on the output, no filtering, which gives me this waveform here, and the scope says the VRMS is 2.91 volts. My HP meter says 2.779, so not super close, but it agrees. This one says 366 millivolts. Way wrong. Now sometimes this meter gets it right, and sometimes completely wrong, so there must be some kind of software bug on this front. Let's put this on the AC, and it gets that right. And let's put it back on here, measuring the AC component. And now it's got it right, 2.85 which agrees with the scope better than this meter does, but you can't count on it, and then once in a while it goes back to just a few millivolts. So, some kind of software bug in this thing. So, trying to measure the 120 hertz ripple from the DC unregulated didn't seem to work that well, but now just measuring the AC voltage, uh, this is my good meter, 1.29 volts, 1.29, they are very close, and let's just step through the ranges, very close. I guess that means I can trust both of these. I guess every time I go past certain voltage levels it warns me. But 88.5, 88.6, very close. 138.7, 138.4, very close. And now stepping through DC voltages. These are again very close. 2.09, 2.09, excellent. 5.64, 5.648, 5 so this has got more digits on there, which is nice. Yeah, that's good. And that's as high as I can go on the DC on this power supply. So now it's just discharging the filter capacitors. Now my old HP meter displays down to the millivolt, but this one goes to tenths of a millivolt. So I'm curious if that's accurate, so this power resistor, I've got 90 turns exposed, and I just uh, put a resistor in series with it, so I have 90 millivolts across here, so every turn should be 1 millivolt. And if I try to read one turn with my HP meter, that says 1 millivolt, now 2 turns, 2 millivolts, 3 turns, 3 millivolts. Let's try this one, 1 turn on here. 0.9 millivolts, that's very close. Two turns, 1.9 millivolts, three turns, 2.9. So this is very nice, considering that this is at the bottom of its sensitivity, but it also has a millivolt scale. So let's again go at one turn. It says 0.96 millivolts, that's very close. Two turns, 1.97 millivolts. Three turns, 2.97 millivolts. So the really low millivolt scales seem to be quite accurate on this thing. Now measuring resistance, my HP meter for this power resistor says 26.2 ohms. And this one says 
26.3 ohms. It takes it a while to get to that. I think the HP meter is a bit quicker on it. Yeah, much quicker. And on the other extreme, this is a 20 mega ohm resistor. HP says 18.24, and this guy says 18.23. That's very close. I'm using a 10 mega ohm resistor to get a low amount of microamps, and these two meters agree pretty close to each other. And both of these, I have to change the connector, so if this is still in ohms on here, it makes an unhappy beep to remind me that I'm doing something wrong. Whereas on this one, if I leave that plugged into here, it just gives me a bogus reading, but doesn't tell me that I'm doing something wrong. And on this one, I can't even switch back to volts while I'm in here, because to switch back to volts, I have to close this shutter and move it over here, and then I can go back to volts. Whereas on here, there's no such safety thing. Uh, this shutter mechanism is annoying and awkward, but it's saved me a few times. And this one also measures capacitance. This one would be a 0.01 microfarad. And it says 9.6 nanofarads. That is very nice. These things are not necessarily that close, and uh, 0.01 microfarad is the same as 10 nanofarads. Let's try this one. 228 nanofarads, and on here it says 0.22 microfarads, so that's the same thing, very close. So whatever error that is, it's likely to be the capacitors, because they're not that precise. 480 nanofarads, and it's supposed to be 0.47 microfarads, again very close. And here's a cool gadget, this is a variable tuning capacitor out of an old piece of test equipment. And as I adjust this this way, the plates get close together, which makes for more capacitance. And as I adjust it, this very quickly measures the new capacitance. And with the plates all the way apart, we have 0.03 nanofarads. But then I had the idea, can I measure the capacitance between two metal plates? Because of the oxide on this aluminum, they're not actually physically connected right now, and I'm measuring 0.6 nanofarads. And let's lift this up and it goes down 0.06 and if I lift it up further 0.03 so I can just measure the capacitance just from proximity of these two metal plates I think that's very cool and with it entirely moved away I get 0.23 nanofarads just probably capacitance on everything else and now with the wires not touching anything it actually reads zero but I think if I just bring the wires close to each other yeah, we're starting to see some capacitance just from through the insulation of the wires. Let's just bundle them all close together. And I get some capacitive coupling between those two wires. I'm already at 0.03 nanofarads, so that's pretty cool. 0.44 nanofarads now. And uncoil the wires. And it gets down very low again. This meter can also measure much larger capacitances, so this is a 15,000 microfarad capacitor. And let's measure that. And it takes a while. So it says 14.61 millifarads. So that's pretty close to 15,000 microfarads. I've also used it to check the uh, output filter capacitors on this unregulated power supply and was able to establish that I didn't need to replace them. Same thing. And on this one, I've got an 85,000 microfarad capacitor and it can measure that too, but it takes a while. So it says 72 millifarads, so that cap in there may not be up to its rated capacity anymore, but it's also 50 years old. Now, this thing also has a function generator, and I kind of have to refer to the manual to figure out how to get into those things. So I think I have to go to Volt, and then hit this button for two seconds. There we go. And that's set to one kilohertz output, and I've got that hooked up to the speaker, which is why it's beeping. And let's change the frequency, frequency, and I can select from a bunch of frequencies. And it doesn't become active until I exit this here. So I don't have a whole lot of choices in terms of frequencies. I can also change the amplitude, but it's already at maximum. Yeah, that's much quieter now. 
And I can change the duty cycle for square waves, but again, it's very coarse. And the type of wave, let's go to sine wave. Louder. Volts. I'm probably overloading this a bit. This should be much louder if it was 3 volts. So that signal source on that thing is no substitute for a proper function generator, but I guess it could be handy at times. But I just hooked up my scope to this, and it looks like it's a fairly nice sine wave coming out here when that's what I request. Let's try a different one. Let's try the what they call the ramp, which is more of a triangle wave. And nice and smooth on here, but seems rather stair-steppy on the scope, but still looks about right. Let's go highest frequency it goes with a square wave. Let's see how clean that is. Zoom in on that. And, well, not super square, and that's at 50 kilohertz, so high frequency source this is not. And I've got this in scope mode hooked up to this scope's test output. And annoyingly, when you go into scope, it always defaults to 200 volts per division, which is kind of useless, but the auto button does zoom in on that. Oops. No, oh, that's just exited scope. And just tap on auto. There, and that's our square wave, which looks pretty nice. Let's zoom in on that a bit. And I was a little bit suspicious how that signal seems to overshoot when it transitions, but having the scope look at that signal itself, I see the same thing, so I'm guessing this is accurate. Now, I don't see any way of scrolling or zooming in on things in here after the fact, whereas on here, after I stop acquiring, I can still change the time base and look at the signal in a great amount of detail, whereas on here, I'm just stuck with what I've got on the screen, but it's a meter for quick tests. Uh, it certainly won't replace this. And now I have both scopes hooked up to the speaker, so if I tap the speaker, we can see a pulse every time. On here, much less so, because the maximum sensitivity on this thing is 500 millivolts per division, whereas this one right now is set to 50 millivolts per division. So way more sensitive, and this one goes one step lower, whereas this is its lowest step. Let's just blow into it. So we can see the waveform, but not as nice as on here. Considering at DC and AC, this can measure down to 0.01 millivolts, uh, that sensitivity in scope mode is a little bit disappointing. Now testing something a little bit faster, I've got a continuous I squared C serial communication on here at 100 kilobits per second, and this is picking up the waveforms just fine, although looking on my other scope, this is updating the screen way faster than this one is. But I'm seeing this signal overshoot top and bottom quite a bit, and I'm just not able to see this on the scope at all. And I think that's a signal integrity issue, because I'm running that high-speed signal through just regular voltmeter probes, whereas the scope has got a proper scope probe with coaxial shielded wire. So I switched to much shorter leads, but I'm still seeing those overshoots, and I'm pretty sure that's a problem with this scope here, because, again, I can't even trigger on these overshoots on here. Now the other thing I've noticed is if I set the time base to something really short, like 10 microseconds per division, triggering can be quite unreliable. So if I just do a single shot communication on here, the scope picks it up just fine every time. But this doesn't trigger. So I just do a whole bunch of single shots and this never updates. But if I now make this go continuous, then this guy updates. But again, with single shot, rarely catches it. And I was just trying to change the time base on this thing by pushing this button and then using these arrows here. But it doesn't do anything. The uh, time base doesn't change. And I realized if you single shot acquired something and it's in stop, then that doesn't work. So just get out of single shot and change the time base. Oh, it still doesn't work. So I have to change the trigger mode to normal. And now I can change the time base, except uh, pushing right actually decreases it. There. And now I'm just testing single shot by just touching a power supply lead to my probes, and in auto it catches that consistently. So now at 5 milliseconds per division, it triggers every time. And let's go into single shot. And I caught that one. I have to hit push, push the save button to re-trigger. Missed. 
caught. Missed. Missed. Caught it. Now I just popped this thing open and popped the battery out. And this is the battery for it, which is basically your standard 18650 battery, which are used in things like these tools. And these typically have a capacity of 2 amp hours, 2.6 amp hours, thereabouts. And running this thing in voltmeter mode, I'm measuring the current going into it at about 0.09 amperes, which is to say we should expect, I don't know, 20 to 25 hours of operation in voltmeter mode. If I put it in scope mode, the power consumption more than doubles, which means in scope mode, we should expect to get about 10 hours of operation out of one of these batteries, maybe up to 12. Whereas this one just takes a regular 9 volt battery and I get at least 3 years out of a 9 volt battery so I don't think about the battery in this one very much. But at least it's a fairly standard battery so if I kill that one it's easy to get that same sort of cell as a replacement and it's just kind of sort of those leads to it. And one more thing, the digits on this one look really cool if you're looking at it up close but from far away these outlet digits are very hard to read compared to the much lower contrast and much smaller digits on this one. So. I wish they just went for more plain looking digits. So what do I think of this? It's a really nice multimeter. Love the accuracy, sensitivity, the capacitance mode. Won't be using it to measure the AC component of a mostly DC signal. But if I have an AC signal and I want to get a sense of what it is, one of these will just tell me the size of it, whereas this will tell me the waveform, which is a big step ahead from just a regular multimeter. So I imagine I'll be using one of these instead of this one quite often in the future because if you just want to see the waveform this will do although if you have to debug a really gnarly problem there's no substitute for a big scope like that